Hi, this is Anrek. Um, today I'm at the uh, EFF. Uh, I will be interviewing uh, Kurt Opsahl on the Electric Frontier Foundation's defense of the Internet Archive from Landmark Education's DMCA subpoena to identify the individual who uploaded the France TV3 video on the Landmark forum. This illustrates some of the issues surrounding DMCA subpoenas, that uh, it allows for someone to uh, issue a subpoena to identify uh, a critic, uh, which uh, is, is troubling because it may tend to uh, discourage people from posting criticism, even if that criticism does not violate any applicable law, uh, because their identity may be uncovered and they may be subject to uh, uh, either uh, litigation or other uh, disincentives to, uh, to write. And if, even if somebody sues you and you have a meritorious defense, you'll, you'll ultimately prevail, uh, there are a lot of costs associated with uh, being in litigation, There's a lot of difficulties. This is one of the reasons why we uh, step up and help people uh, you know, without charge uh, to help them in situations where otherwise they might have a very challenging time mounting a, a, a defense. Uh, so you can have situations in which people are in the right and are uh, putting up uh, constitutionally protected criticism, exercising their rights to speak anonymously, but uh, uh, may not have the resources to defend those rights. Is there a problem with the DMCA law then, as far as uh, being able to subpoena without a, copy, without a determination of copyright? Well, we believe that the proper thing to do is that, uh, that the court uh, should insist that the subpoenaing party uh, show that they have a valid claim before uh, allowing the subpoena to proceed. Uh, and uh, in this case, we believe that ultimately the, the court would see that there isn't a valid claim. But that's an important check. You have a, a constitutional right to speak anonymously. Uh, now, that right is counterbalanced by a litigant's right to know uh, uh, who they are litigating against and to have the court redress their, their grievances. And so courts balance that out, and uh, there have been uh, many instances over the last uh, decade or so, uh, as the internet has risen to prominence, in which people have attempted to identify somebody who posted a message on a message board, a bulletin board, uh, elsewhere on the internet, uh, and they've sought to find their identities. So courts have looked at those cases and, and determined that someone has to show, the, the subpoenaing party has to show they've got a real case. Uh, that they couldn't have got the information elsewhere, that uh, they have a claim that is, is worthy of the court's consideration, and only when they uh, are able to survive this test uh, can the uh, subpoena proceed. And the DMCA doesn't require that, or does it? And this requirement actually stems from the Constitution. The First Amendment protects your right to speak anonymously. So regardless of whether it is written into a particular statute, uh, the Constitution, of course, trumps any uh, statutes and uh, would require the protection of anonymity, be it through a DMCA subpoena, a subpoena issued through the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, the California Code of Civil Procedure, or other uh, procedural laws. So you're saying the Constitution trumps the DMCA rule uh, ability to subpoena without proof of copyright? The Constitution is the supreme law of the land, and it trumps all statutes. Now, I would think Landmark would say that this impacts their business, that uh, this is material and coursework that is internal to them, that they perform under certain um, privacy signatures uh, for people going in, and that uh, the revealing of copyright information impacts, impacts their ability to do their business. Well, uh, copyright law uh, and fair use uh, uh, takes into account uh, a notion of market harm, that one of the factors that a court will look at in determining whether a use is a fair one is the harm to the market for the original work. And what courts are looking for, however, is, is whether the uh, use is a substitute, whether someone will use the infringing material instead of the original and thereby reduce the market for the original. Uh, however, if it is in the context of, of a criticism, a, a parody, uh, something like that, where it is not a substitute for the original, but rather any effect uh, of the uh, marketability of the original is due to these bitingness of the commentary, uh, that is not a market harm that, that is uh, at issue for the, for the fair use. 
uh, and it seems that no one would conceivably uh, uh, look at this uh, this French film and and say, okay, this 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 has uh, met my demand for landmark forums that I don't need to go to a landmark forum because I've gotten everything that I would presumably get from a landmark forum by seeing this. So, what? Are there consequences if uh, Landmark wins this, and what are the consequences if they lose? Well, I think that uh, at this point we are, we are hopeful that we'll be able to have a, uh, a resolution uh, through discussions with Landmark. Uh, if that is not the case, then uh, we need to go to the court, uh, and we're confident that, uh, that we'll, we'll be successful. I would encourage any uh, video bloggers to also look at our uh, legal guide for bloggers. Uh, uh, primarily uh, designed for, for written bloggers, but many of the issues are applicable to video bloggers. Uh, and and uh, so they can better understand their rights and, if necessary, defend them. Uh, if somebody gets a cease and desist letter or gets uh, something that is attempting to chill them from exercising their free speech rights, uh, the Legal Guide for Bloggers is a good starting point for understanding your rights.